So uh, we all sitting in this room are pediatric hemato oncologists. My name is Dr. Vikas Thua. Uh, I look after uh, children who have blood disorders, cancers, and we do bone marrow transplant. On my right is Dr. Mansi Sardev. She is also a pediatric hemato oncologist. Then Dr. Sohini, Dr. Minakshi. So right now we are going to talk about a boy, his his journey of bone marrow transplant. So we have Elisha with us and. Elisha's mother Sara, they came to us all the way from Kampala, that's the capital of Uganda. This boy was diagnosed with schizophrenia early in his life and fa family was really distressed because of the pain crisis, because of the stroke, because of the issues what he had in the past. They wanted a permanent solution. That's how they came to us. Unfortunately, there was no full match donor available in the family. Neither there was full match available outside the family. We did an unrelated donor search but couldn't find a full match donor. Then we decided to go for a half match transplant and now it's been 12 months post transplant. It's been one year. The family has come back for a follow up and the boy is doing well. So Sarah wanted to share her experience with you all. Over to you Sarah. Another Belisha is now three years and making four years in February. I came here when he was two and a half years for a bone marrow transplant. We did it on December 10th and it's now making a year. We came for a review. It has been very successful. We did not get any complications. He did and stayed active. I would advise and urge all parents, all parents who have children that have blood disorder to at least contact this doctor of ours because he has given Elisha a new life. He has a big group. We thank you all, Dr. Vikas, Dr. Mansi, Dr. Nakshi, and all the group. They have been so very grateful to us and they've helped us. He doesn't have any problems, no infections, no pains, no crisis since we did the bone marrow. He's like any other child who is normal. Thank you so much. So thank you, thank you, Sarah. Uh, I just want to add a few things. So those people who are sitting over there, those who have these unlucky warriors in their family, who've been suffering, who've been having pain crisis, had history of stroke, had history of chest syndrome, they should really consider transplant as a valid option. So now Dr. Mansi who's sitting with us, they're going, she's going to tell you what in a nutshell sickle cell anemia is, and what are the indications of doing a transplant with sickle cell anemia? Um, so sickle cell anemia is a genetic condition uh, where you know, your normal blood cells become sickle shaped so you can have a lot of problems um, like pain crisis, they can have pain anywhere in the body, in the joints, in the muscles, they can have acute chest syndrome, in other words you know some people call it multiple times you're having pneumonia, you can have stroke. Um, so these are some of the complications that you can have when you have sickle cell anemia. Now the indications for transplant um, are either having multiple chest syndrome, multiple episodes of chest syndrome, having multiple pain crises for which you have to be hospitalized and getting IV analgesics or uh, history of stroke. So friends, we need to understand that if you have any of these problems or if you have avascular necrosis of hip, if you have priapism, if you have your kidney involvement, if you have hematuria, if you have any other issue related to sickle, you warrant a bone marrow transplant. But when we talk about bone marrow transplant, we need to understand that we need to have a donor. And the best donor for for these patients is, is a full match brother or sister. But all, all families are not lucky enough to have a full match donor. So Dr. Sohini is going to tell you, if you don't have a full match donor in the family, what options are there to do the transplant? So for those who are not having a full match donor in the family, uh, there is an option of a matched unrelated donor transplant in where worldwide there are registries where people voluntarily they donate their stem cells. So we can search and if we find a donor who is a complete match with the patient, we can use that donor. And if that is also not available, then we can do a half match transplant or a haplo identical transplant like Alicia has undergone. So, so for uh, so a half match donor is available for everyone because parents are always at least fifty percent match with the child. So, for those who are not having a full match, we can go for a 
half mesh comes from. Absolutely right. So, so we need to understand that 50% of our genes comes from father and 50% of genes comes from mother. So you have at least one parent in the family who is 50% matching with you and if you don't have a full match donor available in your family or outside the family, the problem with people of African origin is that your own ethnicity people are not there in the registry. So finding an unrelated donor is a bit difficult for people of African origin but there are problems, there are infections, there is a risk of GVHD, there is a risk of rejection which can happen in a half mesh transplant but there are newer techniques what Dr. Minakshi is going to tell you how we do a half mesh transplant and what are these techniques with which we prevent these complications. Uh, so the complication which can happen in half, half mesh transplant is first is the rejection. So to prevent rejection uh, we give two cycles of pre-transplant immunosuppressive therapy to uh, the children who are planned to have an identical transplant. So with this uh, we give some medicines to decrease the risk of rejection. There are two cycles which are given at a uh, gap of three weeks. So with this we can decrease at least 10 to 20 percent chances of rejection. And uh, another is the GVHD which is a graft versus host disease. So for that uh, we can use uh, T-cell alpha beta depleted cells also. And uh, another risk is infections. So. Friends, we need to understand that infections, GVHD and rejections are the three common complications. The most common problem what we face in a haplotransplant is GVHD, graft versus host disease. So there are ways of decreasing this. So the T cells are the culprit cells in the donor body which causes GVHD. So either you can do an ex vivo depletion, you can deplete the T cells outside the body. There are machines which are available which can just get rid of these bad T cells. Or there is another way in which you can do a T-cell in vivo depletion. We have a drug called cyclophosphamide which we give on day 3, day 4 post-transplant which attacks the alloreactive T-cells inside the body so that they don't harm you and the transplant goes smooth. So I just want to tell you, don't be scared if somebody in your family, a loved one is suffering from sickle cell anemia or any blood disorder and you don't have a full match donor, then we can search a donor from outside. Otherwise, we can do a half match transplant with a high success rate. Thank you very much, Sarah and Elisha, for having a trust in us. And we wish Elisha a good life.